Wow, not to echo David and Sorrell, but yes, it is really bright. Um, if you can go ahead and pull my slides up, please, that'd be really helpful. Um, just got to say, uh, how awesome was Cyrilda's talk? Let's give Cyrilda another round of applause. That was... <laughs> If, if you're not inspired after that one, um, it's great. And of course, it's always wonderful being the white male CEO coming after a talk about diversity. But, um, but so it is. So, you know, and that's the kind of thing that we all have to embrace. So what I'm going to talk about is how we really put values in action. And, you know, many of us in the audience, you know, we're from the Pacific Northwest. We have that environmental you know, mindset and ethic, and how do we bring it from what David was saying in the opening keynote about we're all people who want to bring our entire selves and bring our full values to work, and how can we do that? And so just a little bit about myself. Um, you know, when I set out to launch Sustainable Business Consulting back in 2004, it was on this radical idea that, hey, we could maybe make money by doing the right thing, by helping businesses be more environmentally responsible and be more socially just and diverse and inclusive. And, you know, I went out all across town and I talked to 65 different consulting companies about who sh who's doing this kind of work. And everyone kind of said, yeah, someone should do that work. And I was like, Oh, shoot, I gotta open a firm and do this. So, um, so here we are, you know, 14 years later, and you know, we've worked with over 125 different organizations in over 40 different industries, from big brands, from Amazon.com all the way down to small businesses. And we've been emphatic about how you can 100% bring your values in action. You can be transformative, you can be radical and be helping the organization's bottom line at the same time. So we're all B Corps, right? We're here because we've already agreed to this. But what I'm going to do in this talk today is take us a little bit further. You know, you've done the B Corp assessment, and a lot of people will come and say, you know, what, what's next? What do we do? And, you know, the sustainable development goals are out there. There's 17 goals that say if we really want to have a sustainable planet, we have to identify what's material to our organization and start acting on it. We have to do exactly what Cyrilda says, and we have to stand up when it's uncomfortable, and we have to find those allies. And, you know, Drawdown, the, the Paul Hawken book that came out earlier this year, you know, it was really focused on, oh, my God, we're so hosed at a planet. But you know what? We're, there's hope if we do these things. And so... In this talk, we really need to talk about how do, we, how do we make that shift? How do we go from being an awesome business but get out of ourselves and do even more? And I like to you know, say to people, you know, what, what brought you to this point as a B Corp, you know, it's, it's the foundation, it's a rocket fuel that got you in orbit, but you might need that extra little push to get you out into outer space. And you know, and, which a lot of times organizations, as Cyril just said, they get into a comfortable place and they, 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 they feel like, okay, we got it. We got a great score, you know, on our B Corp. How can we do more? Our organization, you know, was named for two years running best place to work as a, as a B Corp. And, you know, that's something to be really proud of. But we're like, okay, what's, what's next? What's beyond that? And, and we really stride to be, you know, that change maker. And we got that award. And now we're like, okay, well, what else can we do? How can we be better? And I'm sure many of you are in that same predicament. And you're going to want to know, what can I do when I go back to my organization tomorrow to make that radical impact that, that goes above and beyond just what we're doing with the assessment? So one, one tool that my friend Kevin Hagen, who used to be at REI, he's now at Iron Mountain, and I have developed, we call it the Hagen Wilhelm Matrix. The reason why was, you know, we were always going into organizations and trying to assess where they were. You know, you use the B Corp assessment, but there's a lot of other tools. It's an organization, you know, trying to be a leader, a fast follower, are they trying to get beyond compliance? Are they trying to be transformative? Where are they? And so we thought, you know, we really needed to come up with a, a way of talking about this from sustainability that really shows the difficulties in this. And this, this infographic may be a, a little hard to follow, but I'll, I'll walk you through it. Basically, 
a lot of organizations start out as, as single individuals. So you might have a team or department who's working on you know, environmental and social justice issues. And then as you, as you get more mature in terms of this, you're really trying to get out to where we call phase five, where it's fully in your business ecosystem. And you go from the type of change where you know, many of us when we started were in that random or incremental change, but really getting to that breakthrough in systemic change. And what that means is that you have dominant characteristics throughout each phase that are different than one another. So when you're a small business and you're getting going or, or maybe you're working with an organization, you know, there might be a, a, a CSR manager or a DNI, you know, leader who's who's really driving the charge. And that's great at first, but they're getting there a lot by their personal influence. And how you really make it is doing some of the boring stuff by putting in, you know, processes, metrics, efficiencies. But as you get into where we want to be to that ultimate value creation, if you're wondering where these lines are, this is saying that the type of change that you want to have and where you drive the value creation up here, at first you may have some, some difficulty doing it. You might actually, you know, break some eggs before you can actually be better for the environment and, and socially at the same time. Where we want to be is in this industrial ecology space. We want to be having radical collaboration. We want to be doing systems view and get from an idea of, and we've all had this argument with people where sustainability potentially costs more and you finally break that and then it's about, well, what's this going to cost? How much of an investment? We have to weigh our investments amongst each other to really, whoa, this could be something that could really drive business value to, hey, this is what we're all about in terms of value creation. So. You might be looking at it and going, okay, that's, that's a lot on one slide, so, so how do we actually, how does this manifest itself? So, <laughs> exactly, now you're like, whoa, okay. And I apologize for getting this slide, but I'm gonna tell you that when we leave this session, um, my, uh, one of my staffers and another volunteer, we're actually gonna hand out this worksheet. This is being unveiled live today here and at Sustainable Brands in Vancouver at the exact same time. So Kevin Hagen is doing the exact same unveiling of this matrix as I'm doing here because what we found is that, you know, you look at a B Core and you, you do everything in the assessment, but then as, as David and Cyril were talking about, how does this play out in terms of culture? How does this play out in terms of leadership? You know, your processes. And really when you are trying, we're all trying to get to this phase five where we're collaborating with industry, you know, stakeholders and you know, the data we're using isn't just a bunch of you know, ROI data and traditional environmental or social data, but it's really being used in terms of our long-term planning. And how can we get processes that embed and maintain that emotional culture that David was talking about? How can we make sure that innovation and sustainability are the norm, the new rule of how our things are done? You know, it's fully embedded in the same R and that everyone is held accountable. The worksheet that we're going to hand out at the end of this session, it's designed so that you can go back to your organization and just quickly look at it and say, well, where are we on this? Do, is, you know, are executives being tied, you know, is their compensation and their bonuses tied to how we do from a social justice perspective? Are, you, are people being compensated by how much they reduce the company's carbon footprint? And if when we go and work with a lot of organizations, and, I'm, I'm, and I've told you we work with big brands, you know, they'll come and they'll say, you know, we want to be the most sustainable, you know, company in this industry. And then we say, really? Do you really? And we start telling them what it is, and they're like, okay, well, you know, we don't want to share any of our secrets with our competitors, and, you know, we don't, you know, we can, we can you know, make sure that the, the leadership is involved around climate change, but we're going to make sure that we're not going to use that as screening criteria for the board, you know, because we have to get the best board members. And, and they all of a sudden immediately start backing off within about 10 seconds of, you know, saying, do, you know, after they've said, you know, we want to be the greatest in this industry. And this is, is, is fairly common because getting back to what Sarilda said, when you're trying to live your values in action and you're trying to 100% embolden environmental and social sustainability in an organization, then you make people uncomfortable. You know, when we work with a financial institution who says they want to be the most sustainable financial institution in, in the world, and we say, great. And we say, how is your board you know, being picked and how is it being compensated? 
And then they start telling us that they do it the same old way, just like Cyrilda was saying. Then you start flagging it, and you say, well, here's some other criteria that you start needing to use. And it gets them uncomfortable, and they realize they're going to have to kick off some board members, and they're going to have to change the recruiting strategies. And this is... This worksheet that we're going to hand to you is just a, a quick snapshot for you to be able to take it, go back to your organization, or even during the break, and just go, you know, here we're in phase four, but maybe here we're in phase three, or phase two, or phase three over here. And if we want to get to phase five, the beauty of the Hagen Wilhelm Matrix is it's telling you not to be, you know, it, it's not like you're good or bad. It's saying, this is where you are. And to get to the next step, this is what you need to do. And so it's designed to be kind of that roadmap that says, okay, you've got the B Corp assessment done, you've answered all the questions, but how is it embedded in your culture and how you really operate and how you show up in the world? And so often we'll get with an organization that, that really talks about being a leader or a fast follower on sustainability, and more often than not, they're somewhere between phase two and phase three. But by being able to actualize where they are at that present time across these different areas, they start to realize, okay, I can be okay with where I am and not be frustrated that we're not further, but to get further, this is the type of change we're gonna need. So the important thing is you have to understand what you have to learn and when you have to learn it. When we work with organizations that are trying to become you know, the best, when they're trying to be the greenest, when they're trying to be the most socially just, you know, they think, okay, well, this is how I've read all the change management books from Harvard, and this is how it's done. Well, with, as you know, in sustainability, it, it's, it's very different. You know, a company does not move in, move in lockstep. There's always folks who are gonna be above and behind the curve. And I'll just, I'll give you an example. We're working with REI, you know, at the time when Sally Jewell was, the, you know, the CEO of the organization, you know, she got it. And, you know, she got it so well that she was made Secretary of the Interior. But then when the new person came in, they were more about growing the retail brand. And they kind of got the sustainability aspect of it and the co-op, but they, they, that wasn't really what they were there for. And so within an organization, you realize that no organization moves all at once. Certain departments, certain individuals are going to be ahead of each other, and you have to embrace that. There's valuable learnings in each, in each step throughout the process. One of the things that we tell people is when you go from, say, a phase two to a phase three organization, and many of you right now are kind of saying, well, we're not phase two or phase three. You're, I'm phase four at least, you know, or, or definitely phase five. But the reality is when you start looking at this and you move from a, an individual or a small team that's working on sustainability to it's everyone's job, what happens is, you need to actually, if you're that person who's been leading the charge with an organization, you need to prepare your manager and your boss that you're not gonna all of a sudden start hearing all the accolades about you because it's gonna be diffuse within an organization. And this is something that we, we, we warn organizations and, and leaders within a, a business where if they are the one who is implementing sustainability, we tell them, prepare your boss to let them know that as you start giving credit across the company, that doesn't mean you're not doing your job as good. That means it's actually going to be doing better, and that they're not going to be getting as many kudos from the CEO or from their executive director, and they need to be ready for that because sometimes what happens is when the organization starts diffusing the responsibility and the success and giving credit, then the person who's been most responsible for it doesn't seem as, as valuable anymore, and oftentimes they eliminate that job. So that's something to be aware of as you, as you move throughout an organization. There's small dips in productivity between each phase. As Cyrilda was saying, change is uncomfortable. You know, our organization is going through change right now. We, you know, as, as we're integrating, you know, new people in the organization, it's, it's, you know, they're challenging our processes and we're having to think differently and how can we play better? How can we bring diversity and inclusion in our hiring and recruiting practices? It's, it's tougher. But yeah, that's, that makes it, you know, so to, to accomplish what you want, you might have a small dip in productivity, but you're going to accomplish that greater goal. And the reality here is that, you know, you really need to be start to work. If you want to be going into that collaborative, transformative, you know, way that you're going to be radically changing the way business is done, you have to be engaging organizations outside of yours. 
we've seen this in the outdoor industry incredibly, where you've got organizations that compete very vigorously who've realized they're a small part of the entire apparel industry. And if they're going to actually make change and get factories in China to change, they need to get the whole industry on board to do that. So they have to find ways that they can radically collaborate in a way they haven't in the past. Or take, for an instance, one of our clients that we're working on right now has just given us a small little project. They want to solve ocean plastic. You know, we, they came into us and said, you know what? Let's go solve the Pacific Ocean garbage patch. It's only twice the size of Texas um, and floating out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Let's go change that into product. Um, that's a pretty tough problem to solve. And the only way you're going to get there is by radically involving people beyond your four walls within an organization. And that is what you're going to need to be doing as you move through the Hagen Wilhelm matrix. As you move from you know, a, a B Corp that's doing really well in what you are to truly making a change that you want to see in the world. If you remember what you were feeling when David was talking about how he felt on September 12th and what he wanted with his life, if you want that, if you really want the change, or if you just are okay going, you know, I'm working really hard, but I'm okay seeing those videos with turtles and straws coming out of their nose. None of us feel good about that. But, you know, we all kind of get up and we go to our job the next day. This is how we're going to have to, you know, get uncomfortable and think about how we can play bigger. And as you can see, many of us, as we're, we're in, you know, as we become B Corps, we're in this space. But the real benefits, the real power happens as you move to this phase five. You know, you're going to differentiate your customers. You're going to find new lines of business. You're going to lower costs but you're all, and lower risks. But you're also going to find an, an enhanced brand value, and enhanced business value, because people are going to want to work for you. None of us became B Corps because we just thought it was a nice greenwashing thing, right? We all want it. We, we authentically believe in the change we want to do. And this is the type of change we want to have. So as we move along throughout today, know that we all want to go bigger. We all want to go further. We're going to need to find ways that we can bring that, that excellence in a new way that's radical. We're going to need to collaborate differently. We're going to need to bring our whole selves to our business, as you all know. And if we can do that, we can be, go beyond ourselves. So as you venture out through the rest of the day and as you hear other speakers, just think in the back of your head, how could I be thinking about solving an environmental issue differently? In the same way Sorilda was talking about, how can you think about diversity and inclusion a little differently? How can I get uncomfortable about talking about this situation? And when you do that, you're going to find that, that change will become possible and that you'll be a better brand of yourself and of your company going forward. Thanks so much for your time, everyone.